I guarantee that you're here because you like video games. You know why I know that? Take a gander. Take a minute and think about it. It was probably the title, but I could be wrong. You never know. So I guarantee that most of you have played video games at some point in your life. Even if you aren't a console or PC gamer, you've definitely touched a mobile game. Don't lie to me. Most of you probably know me from my modding video, and today, I want to talk about the other half of that. The games. You can't play consoles without having games, unless for whatever reason, you just really like Microsoft Word. I'm gonna talk about the games that I played growing up. I guarantee there will be comments about me being too young for some of these things, but why? <laughs> I'm gonna talk about my experience playing them now, a little bit about the game, how it impacted how I game now. Fun stuff. It's fun stuff. This is a fun video that I have been working my ass off the last four weeks to get out. This project was 100% worth it. There's so many games I'm glad that I could play again now, and even while I'm saying this, I am remembering titles. I don't have time for this! I'm gonna shut up now so we can talk about the Game Boy Advance. I tried my best to make this video in chronological order, but to be fair, most of the consoles I had in my childhood were already there before I was born. Some I'm not 100% sure when I got them, and neither is anyone else, so I've put them where I roughly think that I started playing them. And we're just gonna go with it. So to start, we're talking about the Game Boy Advance, an incredible handheld if you enjoy having a flashlight on your screen 90% of the time. I definitely spent my fair share of time using this mostly in car rides, as I was limited to an hour of electronics a day. The first game I have on this list is Stuart Little. To be honest, I don't think I got very far in this one. When I booted it up the other day, there wasn't a lot going on. It's basically just a parkour platformer, there's enemies, you gotta jump around. Um, my emulator for this was kind of broken, so it, it's this demonstration is a little rough, but yeah, you're Stuart Little, you parkour around, and that's it. That's, that's all I know about this game, to be honest with you. I don't have a lot to say. It's what you'd expect. Parkour! I definitely also played some sort of PC version of this game, but I am just remembering that now. Obviously, I had to emulate these games so you guys could get some clear visuals, but um, for whatever reason, 90% of these Game Boy games didn't offer English as a language, so if you notice that I'm playing in different languages, that is why. Moving on, we're now playing Finding Nemo. Um, I think I definitely played this one a lot more than Stuart Little, but again, it's less parkour, more maneuvering. There are specific spots that I do remember. For video's sake, you're just seeing the intro here. You're basically Nemo, and you swim through these little courses, avoiding enemies, standard Game Boy stuff. The visuals are pretty cool. I like that it's bright colors, especially helps to differentiate things on such a small, low-quality screen. Brother Bear kind of hit home a little better than the last two, considering it was a fond movie from my childhood. You're presented with familiar characters, a simple plotline, and you have the greatest opportunity of being able to do yet more parkour. Parkour. I will not lie, I did suck at this a lot, and I can't tell if part of that was the emulation of it, or if I, it's just been so long since I've played the Game Boy properly that I have lost touch. Next is Shrek 2, a generally beloved game among the community of old gamers, but the Game Boy version is just more parkour. Parkour? More enemies, but essentially the same as like 90% of the Game Boy games I've had as a kid. It's parkour, but with Shrek, so I guess that makes it the best parkour that you can get. Shrek 2 Beg for Mercy is basically Shrek 2 for the Game Boy, but you play as Puss in Boots. I'm pretty sure I played this a lot more just because I liked Puss in Boots as a character, but there's no more to it. It's like Shrek 2 with a different character. To my recollection, that's, that's pretty much it. Meet the Robinsons, a game I hardly remember and a movie I remember even less. I really couldn't tell you much about it. I know that there was a school fair, there were kids, there's robots. That's kind of the extent of it. I do, however, remember that this was like the off-brand version of Elastigirl right here. I, d I, d I don't know why. That's just the way it was. I'm sure some of you will agree. This game is just more parkour. Surprise, surprise. 
Um, it was probably one of the Game Boy games I had the most progress in. About 78%, I think it was. Still, I couldn't tell you a thing about it. I'm pretty sure we all know the story of Aladdin, so I don't know what else you guys want me to tell you. Open Season was a really cool film to me as a kid, and I think 99% of that is just because they got to raid a grocery store. This game showed a lot of signs of potentially being less about parkour and more about actual new mechanics that we hadn't seen in other games at this point. <laughs> Finally, something that won't be parkour. Not that it matters much, being as you can't see the screen of a Game Boy Advance 90% of the time. I thought the overall design was actually really cool, really unique. The mechanics, I guess, kind of put me to shame pretty fast. It did have a little more to do than your average parkour game, but it did really prove me wrong later on. Shark Tale was basically just Shark Tale, but with the same gameplay aspects as Nemo. Surf's Up is what you'd expect. It is obviously based off of the movie Surf's Up, but it's like a unique take on a racing game. So you are basically a penguin who surfs and does parkour on the waves. Let's Ride Sunshine Stables is probably the first Game Boy game on this list that isn't parkour, mostly. You essentially own a stable, you have horses, you host people to stay, they come see your horse, you can breed it, you can do it, take it to trials, like... All sorts of horse-related stuff. I'm pretty sure this was one of the ones I played quite a bit, but I genuinely don't remember much about the gameplay itself. However, trying to get through even, like, one day I struggled because I just- I didn't know what anything did. I didn't know what the buttons were, I didn't know what I was supposed to do, what the goal was. So, that took me a minute. Emulating this game was kind of garbage, only for the horse rides, uh, because the timing is so bad and it glitches out so you don't actually know where your hitbox or anything else is. But other than that, the actual game itself was pretty cool. Pretty cool. The Koala Brothers Outback Adventures was basically what you'd expect it to be. I'm not sure that I ever watched Koala Brothers. I feel like I maybe did, but I can't really remember. But I played this game one hell of a ton, all the time. It was probably my favorite Game Boy game as a kid, next to Oracle of Seasons. And you basically have all these mini-games that are all compiled into this, into this Game Boy game, and they get harder in difficulty the more you play. Um, some of them are level-based, some of them are just time-based. The one I played the most of was the ice cream scooping game. I couldn't tell you why, there was just something I really enjoyed about scooping ice cream. Uh, both me and my sister were like that, so... Um, it's a really cute game, really cute style. Honestly, some of the mini-games are still really fun to play, even as an adult. Just because it's... I don't know, it's just the way it feels, just the way the game works. It's simple, but it's fun. It's like those little plastic water bubble ring toss games that you'd find in like the corner store for five bucks and it would you'd play it once and be like okay yeah i'm done To my recollection, we didn't have a ton of Game Boy Color games, but I also couldn't tell you if there were any that we owned before I was born. Growing up, my older sisters had all the consoles, and I was the low-life younger sibling who m mooched off of them, basically. They had the Atomic Purple Game Boy Color, and I'm so glad that my older sister still has it, because I would not be affording a new one anytime soon. One of the greatest games that I grew up on at the ripe age of, I want to say, four, was Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. I couldn't tell you what kind of progress I made on this game as I played everyone else's save files, but man was it fun to return to. That doesn't matter how old the game is, it's always worth returning to. Such a great game. You know, it's a classic, you know? You can't say no to Mario. And on a device such as the Game Boy Color, it's like a match made in heaven. Let's be honest here. The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons, and Ages were incredible games as a kid, okay? I could not tell you why I obsessed so hard over these games. We only had one of them and I'm pretty sure it was ages, but I'm gonna talk about both because I play both now all the time. I keep it on my phone, I take it to go, I don't have a physical copy at home with me now, but 
It's incredible to find out a game you grew up playing, the second one also mattered, even though they seem kinda similar. At first glance, the fact that they both tie into a greater story by playing them together was just, I don't know, it was mind-boggling to find that out. It was incredible, and honestly, kind of ahead of its time, I feel like. Don't quote me on that in case I'm wrong, I didn't research it. Again, like most of the other Game Boy Color games, I played everyone else's already existing saves, so I basically got to start in like the middle of the story, but little me didn't really give a shit about plot. I understood it, but with the Game Boys, I didn't expect there to be a greater plot, so I was just focused on the walking around, adventuring, killing bad guys aspect. Winnie the Pooh Adventures in the Hundred Acre Woods was probably one of my favorite games. Honestly, it had lots to do. I got pretty far in this game from what I can remember. I still have this one even now. It's packed with lots of mini games, kind of like the Koala Brothers, but for the color essentially, but all to the theme of Winnie the Pooh and his adventures with his friends. There's definitely a lot of unique characteristics to this game. It's really charming, really colorful, everything that would appeal to a child, and even now, to be honest, I don't know if it's the nostalgia or the style, it just, it's pretty unique. The PlayStation 2 is still one of my favorite consoles. I don't care how janky it is or crusty, how loud it is without any physical modifications. I still love it. I still play it all the time. It's kind of ridiculous. It'll be like 10 o'clock at night and all of a sudden in the next room you just hear <laughs> You guys know what the PlayStation sounds like, all right? When I was a kid, if I was out of bed before anyone else on like a Sunday, I would sneak quietly down into my living room, go to turn on my TV, turn on the PlayStation to find the volume is just cranked all the way up and I am- and I get absolutely jump scared by the boot up sound. It like blasts my ears off. It's kind of like the THX intro. Let's talk about Crash Bandicoot. The first game I had was Crash of the Titans, and it was a pretty unique game. You run around, you defeat enemies, save your friends, you're Crash, you don't speak, but you can do these somersaults and spins and attack mad scientists. Then you lead into Crash Mind Over Mutant, where you run around, you can spin, you can jump around, and you don't speak because you're Crash, and you defeat these little dudes and mutants. I wonder why people think those two games are similar. Both were good games in the combat and parkour aspect. It's kind of like playing Mario without the Brooklyn plumber. Crash was always one of those games that kind of stood out to me. It was really fun, really bright colors, it's adventurish. There's definitely plot aspects, although most of it is pretty similar mechanics. It's combat and jumping at the right time, or spinning in the air to fly across the giant gaps. I don't know, they were just... They're kind of nostalgic, they're a little bit of fun. It's not something I really return to a lot now, and I haven't played any of the new ones since these games came out. I do have Mind Over Mutant on the Wii as well now, um, but again, not one that I picked up a lot. Crash Tag Team is a game I play a lot with my roommate. She hates it, I love it, okay? It's not only just racing games, which kind of surprised me, I'm not sure I forgot this, but there's still generic Crash content. There's the parkour and the combat, and I don't know, just the merging it into a plot about racing and evil guys, while also still having bits to explore, was very unique to me. I really enjoyed returning to this game. I really only have good things to say about it. It's Crash. How can you be upset? Trek 2 is definitely one of the higher rated games on this list for me, um, just because of not only the mechanics, having good variety, you have several characters that with different abilities right off the bat, different things to do, little collectibles, little secrets, all the fun easter egg stuff, but they really nailed the graphics. Compared to some of the other games, <coughs> Madagascar, um, it really, I don't know, pulled itself together very well. They did a great job of this game. I was thoroughly impressed by Activision on this one. There is definitely a specific song from one of the scenes in this game that has been looping back and forth in my head every once in a while, and I'm not 100% sure why. I don't remember playing this part over and over and over again. So either I got stuck, or 
I did play this part over and over and over again, but I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of there. Pets Dogs 2 was a game that I played all of the time. Holy was I impressed when returning to this one, okay? Obviously the plot is very kids oriented, but it had more than 10 hours of solid main plotline gameplay and that was while skipping all the dialogue and trying to beat it as fast as possible for this video. I was welcome to Pets Dogs 2. <laughs> um, it's another game that's basically built out of mini games. Like, I refer, refer to it as being built out of mini games, and I know it's just the game itself, but that's just how it feels because each section's pretty different. But I honestly still, like, this is probably one of the few next to Madagascar, because obviously Madagascar still has cool mini games. But this is one of the, the few games that, even though it is obviously very much for kids, the gameplay style is still very unique to what you'd see nowadays, so I have to chalk it up. Uh, I heard that Lone got married and now lives in Pawville, close to Gertrude's place, I think? He just told us how to get to our own house. That dog definitely sells drugs after school. <laughs> Orchestra. Oh, we're not getting him like a- I thought we were just gonna find an iPod or something weird, but no, we're gonna get him- like, We're gonna get Stanley some orchestra insects. Did I do it? I don't think I have to sniff to follow him. Oh, I got jerky. I just... Alright, okay, so not all the animals get turned evil. Also, I don't know what it was, but as a kid, I absolutely adore the kiwis. I don't know what it is about kiwi birds. They're just so funny looking. Also, when you take damage, you don't see it happen half the time, so that's pretty helpful. Oh! Are you a zoo? A zoo? Are you a zoo? How do I... Talk to Vulture. I can talk to him. The speed run for 100% for this was seven and a half hours. I was just blown away by how much content was actually in this game and how well it had been done. The graphics were solid, it was very cartoon cute, but also had hints of realism in there. In the first couple hours of the game, it is kind of repetitive playing it back now. It's a lot of go here and then you talk to a dog and then they send you somewhere else before you can get what you need from them. And it's a lot of back and forth, but as you unlock the later areas, it does become really fun. Um, as a teenager, I always wanted to try to find the cat's version because I am more of a cat person, but I just- I still stick with the dog's one. I've pl that's what I grew up with and that's what I still play. I did get it on the Wii at one point and I was super excited about it and this game was not built for the Wii. The Wii offers a controller, a pro controller, that is like most gamepads, but it's compatible with like five games that you're actually gonna play, maybe. Why? This would have worked so well, but trying to steer a dog with a Wii remote, you, there's no like little movements that you can do. It's either big jumps and back and forths and I made it five minutes into this game and quit. And I still have it, but I won't play it because ha! Ah, I'm not 100% sure if I played Pets Horses 2 or if it was some equestrian riding game. I don't know. There was definitely a horse game on the PlayStation 2 and you would go on jumps and rides and you'd look after the horse and stuff like that and I don't know if it's the same game as another one I remember but the only scene that I remember from it is that you're like you play as this woman and you're sneaking around the stables and you have to get into someone's office because you need something and I remember me and my younger sister continuously got caught and never got past that point and I genuinely don't remember what that game was either I just know that we had horse games at some point um but I don't know which ones Madagascar is a very crunchy graphics-wise game, but it's also one of the ones that I was absolutely amazed by. It feels almost free roam without actually being free roam. You essentially follow the plot of the movie, but with extra activities and a slight tweak to the storyline so that you can play it as a game. And it's one of my most favorite games. Even to this day, I still play shuffleboard all the time. 
I don't care what any bad reviews say, I am completely biased on this game. I thought it was incredibly fun. Even now, I've played through the whole thing again. It was one that me and my younger sister used to play all the time. It had good mini games, which is what carries any game and what most new games now lack. It had good storyline, good activities, good mechanics. I just thought it was overall a fun game and it's, you know, still based off a kid's movie, so you can't judge it as anything more than that. This leads me into Madagascar 2, which no matter what I did, couldn't get it to work on my PlayStation or on my computer as a PS2 game. Also, King Julian carries Madagascar. King Julian, Mort. God damn, Mort just set that on fire? I don't know how Mort's alive, to be honest. Can we- can we talk about that? Can we talk about how the fuck this little dude's alive? But, I managed to download the PC version, and I cranked the graphics up to high, and... Yeah. Not really sure what they were going for with these extreme hair graphics, but it's not... not okay. I'd never seen them like this before, and it scared the absolute shit out of me, I will not lie. Madagascar 2 really expanded on the free roam aspect, and I know a lot of people judge it for its graphics and glitches, but that's just what makes a game so great. The game has almost sort of lobby area, it's the watering hole, and you tend to return to this part after you've done different sections of the storyline. So you go off and play as Alex and come back to the watering hole and all of a sudden it's kind of expanded the area, there's new things to do, new people to talk to, and then you go off as one of the others and do their plot line and kind of come back and it does feel like you have more choice and more flexibility even though it is still a very set and strict plot line. I would probably bump this one up above the first one, not just for graphics but also for gameplay. The second one had way more mini games. I think there was 10 or 12 somewhere around there and I I'm always going to be biased towards mini games. Mini games just expand upon a game in a way you didn't know could be done. A way that you didn't know could attract so many people to play it. I don't know what it is, I just- I fucking love minigames. I love the main game too, but just to have these little bits on the side that you can do for fun. It's like side quests. That's- that's the modern equivalent to minigames in gaming now is just side quests. I've just realized this now. Sing Star Pop! I really don't remember singing most of the songs on this, except for that one James Blunt song, where you had to say flippin' high instead of the F word. Except, of course, knowing my younger sister, that one part was the part that she had to absolutely blast when singing. Jungle Book Rhythm and Groove was pretty cool, to be honest. Um, I would still- I'm still looking for dance mats, but I'm not gonna pay 30 bucks a mat on Amazon, okay? It's like bringing an arcade into your house, and what's not to love about that? I don't really care about the game or the music or whatever it is, it's just fun. It's the same as I'm pretty sure we had Boogie, but the only one I ever remember doing is You're the One That I Want from Greece, and none of the rest of the game ever kind of clicked with me. So I, I, I'm not 100% sure there. Flushed Away I played a lot. Flushed Away was basically like being flushed away. I f drowned in a toilet playing this game. It was difficult for me. I couldn't tell you why. It was difficult for me when returning to it to get content for this game because who the f decided that you play as this rat and he spins around on a toothpick and you have to hit these little baubles in the air to fly at different heights and stuff. Man was the introductory course a pain in my ass. Aside from that, Flushed Away was actually a pretty good game plot-wise and mechanic-wise. I had it on the DSi as well, I don't think I played nearly as much of it on there as on the PlayStation. Or maybe that was the one I played instead. I, I'm not 100% sure, but man, my childhood blurs together, I'm doing my best here. Moving on to PC games. Now, some of these are a little back and forth because I'm doing it in chronological order console-wise and not game-wise. But fortunately for me, there was a little bit of PC gaming in my childhood. Now, as a kid, I'd normally prioritize my other consoles, so the DSi, the Wii, when we get to that point, but I definitely spent my time on here a little bit. The first two games I'm going to talk about are the Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2. These games made no sense to me as a kid because there was so many technical aspects that even sitting down now, I just don't have the brain cells to try to learn the game. I mostly played on pre-made maps and just built decorative things around because that was the only part that actually interested me. The creative stuff building slides and stuff, and then I'd run out of money, I would get closed down from debt and start all over again. 
Minesweeper. Minesweeper. Same as Solitaire is Solitaire. You try not to blow up. Blue's Clues was definitely a part of my childhood, and I genuinely hope it was a part of yours. I used to play Blue's Reading Time Adventures. I'm also pretty sure there was one other one, but I can't really remember. I just know that there was, um, mini games with salt and pepper. Um, that's not- I'm not sure if it's in Reading Time Adventures 2 or what. Essentially, it's a game where you learn to read and pronounce words. You run around doing all these little activities as Blue, with your initial goal being to try to find all these newspapers for the news article stand. You pick up these abilities as you go around and do different quests and stuff. Not a whole lot to say there. It was a really cute game, definitely one of the ones I played more often. That's- it's kinda it. It's Blue's Clues. It's- there's no complaints there. Brother Bear was my introduction to cracked out gaming, okay? Me and my sister would play this game intentionally, the way it was designed. We wouldn't try to break it, we wouldn't just run into walls and whatever. But I specifically remember that there were a lot of instances where we would somehow manage to get out of the map and fly around just over the top of everything in the final boss fight specifically, and we would just become invincible. This game broke so many times as a kid that I, I don't even know. We played it anyways. It was too good. I broke this game trying to play it for this video. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for the assignment. <laughs> Christ. I'm drifting. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the? Seriously? It really just said, we're gonna respawn you in the spot with the disappearing platform. It's just the way that some PC gaming was back then, when companies tried to push their limits. Essentially, you follow the story of Brother Bear, but you can also collect berries that give you mild superpowers, and you do extra game-related things. This game is kind of small, but it does still hold a place in my heart, and if it didn't break as much as it did, I probably would still play it a little bit. It was really cute and really fun to return to, and it healed my inner child just a little bit. The same kind of story goes for Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, I'm trying my best here. You essentially play as Spirit, and you have a completely open world, free roam style kind of game. You go around on all these little quests, helping people, saving your horses, saving your herd, all sorts of little things. And it's got a lot of stuff to do in it. It's a pretty big game for what it is. What still stands out to me to this day is the perspective and the graphics. Just together, it's... I don't know. It almost feels comfy and relaxing in a way. It's the kind of game that I would like to have on the Steam Deck or the Nintendo Switch that I could just sit down in bed with, or if I'm out somewhere and I have half an hour to kill. It's just one of those things I would definitely pull out like it's... I don't know. I just, you probably are here to hear more technical things and opinions, but it's a childhood games video. I am going to be biased, but you will know if it was a piece of shit. I highly recommend this game if you ever get your hands on it. It's just a bit of fun, even if you weren't really into the movie as a kid, or even as an adult. But it's it's just there's something wholesome about it, and really... I don't want to say aesthetic, but I'm gonna have to say aesthetic. The Sims 2 I played later on in life, I think somewhere around middle school. I borrowed it using my older sister's origin account, and I probably built one of the ugliest houses you've ever seen, and that was kind of it. <laughs> I didn't do a lot with The Sims 2, but I'm glad I got to witness it before the, I got The Sims 4, because we're not gonna- we're not- we're not gonna talk about the differences here. Undertale was one that I played, I think, around the age of 9 or 10. Really unique game for me at the time, I hadn't played anything really like it. You play as this girl who falls into a hole and then ends up meeting all of these strange creatures and flowers and attacking spooky monsters. It's kind of like if you took Pokemon with a dungeon crawler with a dark plot. I beat that game a couple times, um, definitely took my attempt at all of the endings there, and it was something that I thoroughly enjoyed when I was younger. 
I haven't gone back to it since, really. No, I probably don't have to say a lot. You've all probably heard of the game before, and even if you haven't, you've definitely watched a video that uses the music. Everyone uses Toby Fox's music in their videos. RimWorld I played around the same time, and this game was absolutely incredible. This game is still incredible. I still don't know how to play half of it, but that's okay. Basically, like, this little colony of stranded people on this strange world, and your goal is to survive. That's kind of the extent of it, but it has real-world aspects. It's like playing RL Craft in Minecraft, but it's a game that's 2D and pixelated. You have to make sure you manage your people. There's, you know, so political aspects to it. There's survivor aspects. You have to make sure you look after sicknesses, and you scavenge, and you... Oh my god, there's so much to this game, and the replayability is absolutely insane. I, I do recommend looking into it if you've never heard of it before, but this was this is still a 10 out of 10 game for me. Wolf Quest is a fucking weird game. You play as a wolf and your job is to try to have kids and have them survive. Now, every time I played this game as a kid, I'd either died in the beginning, or none of my kids survived. That's kind of the extent of it. It's like a real-world wolf sim. I will give it credits to its graphics and its open-world aspect, but I don't have a lot to say about this. You're, you're a wolf. Playing as a wolf. Doing wolf things. End of story. You imprinted on my daughter?! EverQuest was one I didn't really play a lot, but I played it with a group of friends when I was younger, they were family friends, and they were all pretty much into it. I don't think I got really far on this game, I know that... I, you start in like this cave and then there's this nearby cave attached to it that has, I think it was spiders, and you fight them and you level up and you get gear. It's kind of like ESO without all the technical qualities. This was like Elder Scrolls Online of the early 2000s, alright? I still enjoy this game now. I started playing Minecraft at the age of 9. I was in the 4th grade. I hadn't- I didn't know what it was, I didn't even know what Terraria was, that was the same year I found Terraria because I had guy friends in my class that were like, how do you not know what games are? Are you stupid? Um, <laughs> this was a little later on than some of the consoles I'm gonna go back and talk about now, but I got Minecraft as a gift that Christmas, and it was in an incredible experience, to be honest with you. I think I played it before then at my friend's house and these same friends bought it for me, the same friends I played EverQuest with. They really played their role as teaching me modern gaming seriously. So when I started playing Minecraft, the latest version was 1.7.10. And I still go back to that version now because it is still one of my preferred versions to mod. It still has some of the greatest options and I don't know, that's just, it's nostalgic, you know? Not too long after this, I'm pretty sure I also got PE. This was the original era of PE where you had to build a nether reactor to create a chunk of nether in your world. This was the era of building with bricks and wool, because there weren't options. I do really miss playing at this time, and I wish I still had my worlds from back then. I could probably talk about Minecraft forever. I will tell you that I've- I've- oh god, I don't know. If I could keep track of every hour I've spent on Minecraft, I don't even- I would have millions of dollars. Probably. Probably not. I've had several copies of Java, of Bedrock, of PE, of Xbox One Edition, 360 Edition, Switch. I've tried getting it on the 3DS because it's Minecraft, alright? And things change, you lose your emails, and you have to buy copies over and over again. This next game I actually found through my elementary school. Times Attack. Although it also covers addition, subtraction, and division. As you can imagine, it is a math school game. There was another game that we played after this because they decided to move away from Times Attack for whatever reason and it was incredibly boring and I don't remember the name of it and I couldn't be bothered to search it up because I was so upset that they got rid of Times Attack. I completed all four sections of this game in the first year I played it at school. I got almost all of my certificates. They forgot my division paper. And upon playing this game again, it felt kind of small so I feel like I ended up playing the demo but I couldn't really tell. Anyways, it was really cool. It's really unique for a kid's game. It's very RPG looking. You run through these courses um, trying to save your sibling or friend uh, by doing math to defeat monsters and big bosses and stuff like that. I thought it was pretty unique for what it is. It's 3D but with like a 2D platform experience and it just it deserves its own shout out, man. Big brains.
One last noteworthy game from my childhood would be Pajama Sam. You are what you eat from your head to your feet. Now this is a game I don't remember a lot of and I'm pretty sure as soon as I got to the jail cell section right in the beginning of the game, I couldn't figure out how to access my inventory or get out, so I never passed this moment. It's pretty much another small game geared around children and a cute story. Honestly, I was super surprised with the fact that you can interact with pretty much anything in your surroundings. There's a little animation or something that pops out. It's a little bit of fun. It's kind of like the video game equivalent of a pop-up storybook, to be honest. I am going to say again that I think the graphic design is unique. There's not a lot of other PC games that I played that look like this, and it's nice to have things freshened up every once in a while to see something different, you know? I'm pretty sure I also played another game by the same developer, about a fish, but I'm not 100% sure while looking and doing my research for this project I couldn't figure it out or find one that clicked with me, so that's pretty much all I have to say about these games. I hope you all enjoyed. I have split this project into two parts as it is taking me so long. I know this has taken five weeks just to get this one out, but the second half of this video isn't going to take nearly as long being as I've already played the games, I've done my research, I've scripted, recorded everything I need, I just have to edit it and put it all together and fill in any blanks that might appear. I really wanted to take my time making these videos as they do mean a lot to me as it is my childhood, and I really needed the time for some games to pop back up because even while recording this, I forgot some. One game that didn't come to me until last night, the day before releasing this video, was Polar Express on the PS2, so I just want to say that that game was also pretty fun as a kid. Kind of a whole fever dream, but if it interests you to look at what that was like, definitely go look it up on YouTube. I will be releasing something different before the second half of this video just to give myself a break as I have been putting hours into this every day for the past five weeks. So I hope it's something you guys will enjoy. I hope you all liked this video, I hope it hit home for you, maybe resurfaced some games you forgot about. I also hope you have an amazing day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are, and I will see you guys on the next video. See ya!